Hello, uh, my name is John Turner. I work at Nebraska Investment Finance Authority, and we're here today to talk about uh, a new opportunity that we're offering with our webinars. Um, many of you have heard of our conferences uh, that we have every year. Well, due to the pandemic this year, we've had uh, webinars on um, different topics. Some of them are topics from our conferences, and some of them are topics where we feature different agencies. Uh, so what we're doing starting in September is a property manager special edition um, through our networking at NIFA conference series. And the focus of this is really to provide guidance and help to property managers. Um, because we understand with our role at NIFA that property managers wear a lot of hats, many hats, um, whether it's uh, finance or trying to get tenants to rent their apartment, trying to keep tenants, preventing eviction, having to you know, uh, complete evictions. And we thought that uh, let's pull some resources together and different services and, and try to uh, educate property managers as much as possible to try to help help them understand where tenants are coming from, help make their jobs a little easier. Um, and so you're gonna see uh, four sessions in September and October that are gonna feature um, topics like eviction prevention, uh, how do you deal with tenant behavior, uh, what do you do if you expect domestic violence is happening? And even things such as human trafficking, what are some of the warning signs around that? So today uh, I've asked uh, Kelly Schultz in our compliance, the tax credit compliance department and Sarah Dakota with our, our, our allocations, tax credit allocations department to talk about um, how this, how maybe they see that this could help property managers and go and some of the things, the feedback you might hear from property managers when you're out? Yeah, absolutely. So um, basically, you know, there can be several different things that occur during an inspection. Some tenants, you know, get very nervous about people coming into their home because it is their home. Um, and they might see, you know, somebody is nitpicking their, um, you know, their housekeeping issues or, um, you know, things like that, where it could be things that they're just not aware of as a homeowner or as a um, renter. Um, they might be afraid to ask the management to fix something. So they might go, you know, months without having a smoke detector, which is, you know, a violation, um, a safety, a health and safety violation. Um, and it could, you know, cause their um, alarm not to go off in case there's a fire. Um, so there's there's lots of learning tools that um, can can happen if the the each tenant is properly um, you know, told maybe what to expect and what they should do to feel comfortable and um, know what to ask for and um, things to get fixed. There's also could be another um, spectrum where there could be some, um, you know, mental health issues. You could walk into an apartment and it could be, you know, basement or um, floor to ceiling boxes and you can barely get in, which could also be a health code violation with, you know, not able to exit the building um, and get out in case of a fire. Um, but if the tenant, instead of, instead of, like you said, doing an eviction right away, if they could work with them and provide them the services that they might need with some mental health um, therapy or, or sessions, um, then that could be an option that you could still save your tenant who probably, you know, is paying rent and, and, and a good tenant otherwise, but they might need some additional help. Yeah, and that's good. And that's kind of the concept is that uh, we want to help you understand what resources might be in your community. Some property managers might already be dialed into the local behavioral health provider or some of the really good case managers that come out and do home visits. But hopefully we can kind of educate people on, on what resources exist. Um, Sarah, you've actually had some background in property management yourself, haven't you? I have. Uh, I spent many years on site and then as a regional property manager. So I understand fully um, the need that, you know, sometimes you, people can't pay rent or maybe they've damaged the apartment for whatever reason, like Kelly said, perhaps there's mental health issues or something like that. But the cost of turning over a unit is so high. So um, one of the biggest tools I think that as a property manager th that I found useful was those contacts. Um, how do you mitigate that chance or that need to 
evict someone. Um, so, you know, John, you had some great examples of, of, you know, ways that you could reach out to different people in the community to um, perhaps there's funds that can help you um, with rent payment issues. And um, with the with COVID-19, um, there'll be new programs available and, um, you know, perhaps churches and all sorts of different organizations. So um, hopefully, um, we will hear a lot of new information and maybe reminders of, of things that we already know um, because, because they've been in a community for a long time, but perhaps we haven't needed to use those resources. Yeah, and that's good. And so we've decided to start with four topics. The first one, again, is eviction prevention. And that's just like Sarah was saying, what are some resources that might be out there? There's a lot of funding that's coming into Nebraska now, now regarding COVID relief, the CARES Act funding. And there's actually funding that is designed to help landlords. So uh, if they fell on hard times because their rents were getting paid, and you'll hear about that in our first session, Tenant Behavior is going to talk about um, some of the mental health issues. We'll have experts on there, including law enforcement, to talk about what it means when you call a police officer to say, this person, uh, I can't reason with them, and they're doing some really bizarre behavior, and what are some things we can learn about that? Um, and then safety issues, like I mentioned, with domestic violence and human trafficking. But if these go well, you know, there's lots of topics. I can think of, uh, of many other topics that would be beneficial. And we want to learn from property managers. So I'm hoping we can get some feedback to say, hey, this was really good, you know, um, or we got this covered. Now we need help with this. But yeah. so it sounds like this is a good thing. <laughs> Agreed. And, you know, I think that um, it could be a great avenue for people to share their personal experiences and to really learn from one another. Um, I know that a lot of times when NIFA, when someone thinks of NIFA, um, they might think of compliance, but we understand that there's so much more to what a property manager does than just do, you know, making sure that people are meeting the income requirements and the making sure the apartments are being kept at certain standards as far as maintenance there's so much more involved in that so you know i i think um john thank you for you and your team for putting together uh this program to help our property managers who without them none of this would be possible exactly yeah I'm, uh, i appreciate that and i do think right now the thing the word around the state is we need units so there's mm -hmm. people that are either getting evicted or have already lost their apartments or there's people that are looking for units to live in, and so we have to figure out a way to help bridge that gap. 